All right, so today we're going to do some diagnostics on the uh, voltage regulator, battery, and uh, the stator on this Honda VFR 800. Was uh, out on a, a fairly long trip. It was about uh, 125 kilometers from home, and uh, the battery just basically went dead. Pulled up to a set of lights, and uh, bike shut off, would not start, uh, no charge in the battery. So, this is what led me to the test that we're going to do today. Uh, the first and simplest test that we're going to do is we're just going to do a voltage test on the battery. Now in this case I had to charge the battery back up just to make sure one that the battery is still in good condition uh, and that's not the, the main issue. Uh, if the battery voltage in this test uh, drops off, you know, dramatically it drops, then we know the problem is most likely the battery. If we're not getting charged to the battery, then we can start tracing things back further into the electrical system. So let's start with the simplest and easiest to access, which is the battery itself. So I have the battery here exposed. I've got my voltage uh, uh, multimeter here. Uh, set to DC and uh, we've got our probes ready so what first thing we're going to do after charging this battery is just take a simple voltage test of the battery now this particular battery being 12 volts uh, each cell should be 2.2 2.25 volts uh, per cell there's six cells in the battery that's how we get our 12 volts and we see that this battery is 13.25 volts uh, open circuit test uh, on the whole battery. The next step then is to go ahead and start the bike and see if the voltage goes up beyond that 13.25. Uh, if the voltage is above 13.25 then it's a pretty clear indication that there's charge getting in. The other thing we're going to do with this particular test is we're going to load the battery, we're going to turn the high beam on, uh, and we're going to bring the engine RPM up to 5,000. That's what we want to do in order to make sure we're getting maximum amount of uh, energy or, or current out of the stator. Uh, and according to the uh, manual, that's where this stator in this VFR 800 generates the uh, its peak power is at 5,000 RPM. So again, ignition is turned on. We're going to go ahead and start the bike. And check the voltage. So we see that the voltage is actually lower uh, and we're going to bring the engine RPM up to 5,000 and watch for a change. Okay, we see no change. I'm going to go ahead and load the battery up even further, turn the high beam on. We see the voltage drop even further. Now it's below uh, 12 volts. With the high beam on, again, bring it up to 5,000 RPM. No change. In fact, the voltage uh, you know, is, is continuing to drop and it'll eventually just work its way down. So we can shut off the bike and rule out the battery as the issue. Uh, we've seen the battery basically discharge uh, during these course of events where we had the voltage being measured as we loaded up the battery. Uh, it's pretty clear at this time that there's a problem either in our voltage regulator or in our stator. So that's the next test that we're going to run. So to access the wiring harness, for the voltage regulator and the stator, we have to take the right panel off of the bike to expose this harness. What we want to do is we want to uh, test the voltage regulator and the stator. And it's very easy to locate the harness that comes out of the voltage regulator because that's where both the plugs are. Uh, there are these plugs right here. And there's a wiring harness that runs up to the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator is this device that sits in behind here. You can kind of make it out because it has fins on it that are there for cooling. The harness that comes down with two plugs on it. 
Now in order to access this plug we have to pull back this shielding, protective cover, and we see that we have a plug with three wires going into it, three yellow wires, and that is the uh, uh, alternator or stator uh, wires that go into the voltage regulator, and then this plug right here, which is for the um, uh, voltage regulator going into the wiring harness. And this one has four wires or five wires in it, depending on uh, the type of voltage regulator that you have. This is not an OEM voltage regulator on this particular bike, so it only has four wires on it, uh, two black and two red. If it was uh, a Honda one, then there's actually uh, an additional wire that's white and black that uh, runs down uh, this side as well. That uh, black and white wire is just uh, basically a monitoring device. So we're going to start, like I said, testing the voltage regulator. Uh, and we take this connector apart and we expose the inside. And uh, this piece right here, uh, the, uh, the female part of the connector, is to the wiring harness. So we can set that aside. We're going to deal with the voltage regulator side. So to do our first test on the voltage regulator, what we need to do is test the diodes that are inside that voltage regulator. And that's what a regulator is. It's basically a series of diodes that allow current to flow in one direction. And when that current uh, fills up, then it's allowed to uh, shut off and uh, not overcharge the battery. But when the current in the battery drops or the demand in the bike picks up, those diodes allow that current from the uh, stator to flow in. It's also changing the current from AC to DC, but that's not relevant to our test. So what we have to do is take our multimeter tool and set it to diode testing. And test diodes. And, and this is that setting right there. You can make that out. That's the diode tester. And we see by default that the reading is one. And what we need to do, understanding that current flows through this um, voltage regulator into the wiring harness, then we need to understand that in order to do this test, we have to measure current in the same direction. So in this case, we need to attach the red probe off of the voltage regulator, positive probe, to the negative wires. In this case, the negative wires are black. And then the black probe from your voltage regulator to the red wires, the red wires being positive. And we'll see what happens, what reading we get when we do that. I've attached the red or positive probe to the black wires and the black probe to the red wires. And we see the reading we get on the multimeter is 0.973. Now, as I said, there's four wires in the back, so there's two grounds and two positives. We need to do the same thing with the upper ones and we should get a very similar reading. 0.974. So we know that current is allowed to flow in, in, in the one direction, that's fine. What we also gotta make sure is that current doesn't flow in the opposite direction. By reversing your probes, applying the black probe to the black wires, the red probe to the red wires, and now that we've got those affixed, we should get no indication whatsoever on our multimeter, which is what we have. So let's try the upper ones. And again, no indication on the multimeter. So what this test tells me is that the diodes are functioning properly inside the regulator rectifier. This is always your first step when you uh, have a suspect uh, regulator rectifier, is to make sure the diodes are functioning properly within it. If you received any reading um, uh, or did not get uh, a reading when you hooked it up with the uh, positive lead probe to the negative wires and, uh, and the negative probe to the positive wires. If you didn't get a reading or there was a lot of variation between the diode readings, uh, then you can suspect the regulator rectifier. Uh, as it stands with this particular uh, regulator rectifier, I'm happy with the test. It's probably not this particular regulator rectifier. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm quite certain it's not. And we can move on to the stator test. The stator wires are located right here. 
These are the other ones that are attached to the regulator rectifier, these big three yellow ones. And it has a pretty massive connector right here. What we want to do is we want to part, there we go. Um, in this case, we're testing the uh, stator, not the voltage regulator. So we can take the, uh, the harness that goes to the voltage regulator again, set that one aside. And we're just dealing with this particular lead that comes off of the stator. So this is the, the female part of the connector. What we're going to do with our, our multimeter this time is we're going to check continuity. And continuity, there we go, is that setting right there. And how we know that we have uh, our continuity um, tester in the right position is that if we go ahead and close the uh, connection on the probes, we'll get an audible sound uh, as well. So, and a reading, of course, so that we know that there's continuity there. What we don't want is continuity between any one of these three phases that come off the stator uh, that go into this plug to the, the, the bike itself. In other words, when a stator fails, the coils inside uh, ground out to the, uh, the, the engine case because the, the stator is actually bolted to the engine case, case cover, I should say, on the left side. And uh, if there's a failure in any one of the coils, uh, it'll ground out to the rest of the bike. And it's designed that way so that if something does go wrong, any energy that's being produced is going to ground and not uh, anywhere else energizing the bike or anything like that. The first thing we're going to do is uh, take our any one of the probes, in this case because we're just checking continuity, but we'll stick with the, uh, the red probe, and we'll stick it in any one of the three phases here of the connector, and we'll take our, our negative lead, our, our black probe, and we're just going to uh, stick this onto the engine bike somewhere and I found the best connection is right to the engine block uh, or to the uh, mounting bolt for the engine that holds the engine into the frame and so that's what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hold that probe in there and uh, touch the negative or ground one to the frame and we have an audible signal and a reading so that means that this particular phase is got an issue with it in the stator. I'm going to move to the second one, do the same test. We have another issue there. And the final one. So what this is a clear indication of is that there's a problem in the stator. The stator has to be removed, inspected, and replaced. Um, this is most likely uh, burnt coils inside the stator and an indication as to why we're not getting any charge out of the stator uh, to the uh, to the bike.